all right we're good what's going on guys it's your boy aaron aka turtle the ascended and today people what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring you a tip video so this is going to be six tips that will help you improve in any fighting game any fighting game all six of these tips are very easily transferable uh it depends on what game you're playing you'll have to change a little bit more but ultimately every single one of these tips is going to be consistent they're going to help you if you play mortal kombat if you play smash raw hollow street fighter grand blue it doesn't matter okay it's going to help you in every single fighting game and i'm 100 percent confident in saying so so without wasting too much time let's get right into the first tip all right, so the first tip is going to be act with purpose. Now, if you've already been coached or maybe you've talked to some players, they might tell you the advice, stop autopiloting. What that means is you are simply doing what your muscles have memorized. And sometimes your muscles have bad memory, not as in they don't remember, but they have trained you into doing bad habits that you are not consciously aware that you are doing. Right. So the idea of this first tip is to play while thinking. Right. So if I have a deep muscle memory and I'm just autopiloting, I might just keep going for like hell sweep right here. Right. It's a little sweet move and it's going to get blocked and I get punished. And then if I get into a scramble situation, I might get blocked and get punished again and then I die same thing in like smash i might go back to throwing the same projectile but they've just shown that they can uh punish me for throwing that projectile like in say smash right or in mortal kombat i keep trying to run away and spam something that's been working in every other match but this guy has been using the exact same option to deal with me and instead of changing what i'm doing then i'm just gonna keep getting beat out and get punished and then lose frustrated and so on and so forth so the idea of acting with purpose is to think about what you're doing this requires you to slow down your play okay now there is a certain degree of muscle memory you should have for example a muscle memory of oh i want to get away from the situation in tech and say i want to backdash get away right get away quickly right or in smash i might want to run away walk away or in uh street fighter i may just want to back dash back dash back dash and get some distance right even if i don't have a long range projectile to throw i may want to take a second and reset neutral and sit back here so that i have time to think right you have to run through this stuff very quickly uh fighting game rounds aren't that long some can be long but most of the time they're not right so you have to give yourself some space or make yourself some space so that you have time to act out this first tip so a good example is if i'm coming in and i'm jabbing him and he's not doing anything about it and i make it a setup because he's focused on the jab right he's ready to duck let's say he's expecting the hell sweep so what instead i do while standing one which is a mid right hell sweep is a low so he's expecting that coming with a mid right so you have to think about it right think about why did that get blocked was i obvious or was he just lucky maybe i'll do it a second time to check to see if he's blocking those on purpose maybe i'll throw some mids in to throw off his guard right maybe i'll throw some uh tracking moves because he's been stepping a lot for no real reason right if you haven't given them a reason to do anything there's no reason for you to suspect anything right so act with a purpose. Always when we think about why are you doing this sidestepping? Because this character is weak to the side, so I'm trying to catch whips, right? Why am I throwing out electrons? Because they're not ducking and they don't know how to deal with it, right? Of course my electrics are kinda, are kinda pretty bad, right? I can just keep throwing these electrics because they're not stepping it, they're not trying to step it, and they're not ducking, so I can just hammer them on guard with this all day. And that's pretty much the idea of tip one. You just got to think about everything, you, every action you make. And that helps you to learn and get better in other things as well. As long as you are thinking when you act, you'll be able to ask yourself 
why did I just get hit? Why did they get hit? How can I exploit this? Are they not blocking lows? Then maybe I can keep throwing these lows, right? So be thinking when you play. This is going to help you, and then the more you do it, it'll gradually speed up. You'll be able to think faster with more experience. You'll be able to pinpoint what you need to do even quicker, okay? So, tip two, watch your opponent. So many times, and it happens to me too, I'm not watching my opponent. Okay? In a real fight, I'm not talking inside the game, I'm talking outside the game. If you're about to throw some hands with somebody, if you're about to square up, about to run them hands, whatever you want to say, then you're not going to be looking around. Right? If I'm like this far away, I'm not going to be looking at myself. Right? Let's say if I'm fight fighting somebody in real life, I'm not going to look down to see where my feet are. Uh, and keep watching my feet to make sure I'm moving right or look at my hands make sure I'm uh, washing my hands because the other dude's gonna run up and steal off of me. I'm just gonna get hit get knocked out and that's the end of it right so you're not gonna take your eyes off of somebody in a real fight why would you do it in a fighting game it's the same concept right you should be watching your opponent if you're always watching your opponent you'll be able to see when they're about to throw that low that you normally get hit by you'll be able to see when they throw that mid right or you're getting ready to you can recognize the startup actions right this is something that uh fighting game players in specific fighting games have gotten really good at doing right so if i'm like say i'm the heihachi and i'm watching kazuya and i see kazuya come at me with, they, with the wave dash and i see him hesitate a little bit more from down here and i see that little hesitation because i was watching him but if I'm watching myself as a Hachi, I'm not going to be able to see this little crouch, so I can't recognize that he's actually about to go for uh, a wild stand. Or the extended duck down, the extended little crouch dash, in order to see that uppercut coming, right? So I have to keep my eyes on my opponent so I see everything that's happening, right? So it's not as easy to just surprise me. Right, it's it's just kind of it's kind of common sense actually. You, you just should be watching your opponent anyway. If you are watching your character, that means one of two things. That means either you're not comfortable enough with your character, or you're not comfortable enough in the game, right? Or your coordination may not be as strong. That's another thing. But uh, that means you are taking too much time to make sure you're doing something right, and you shouldn't have to, right? You should be able to look at the enemy character and use your peripheral vision to look at your own character, right? The only time you should take your eyes off the enemy character is if you're trying to see position, right? In a lot of fighting games, there is a wall. In this particular stage, there is no wall. But in most stages that do have wall, especially in Tekken where you can get big damage off of it, sometimes you may glance to see where are we at the wall. Are we at the wall? Am I right by the wall? Do I have room to move away from the wall? Away from the wall? I'm sorry. Uh, can I sidestep away from the wall? These are things you should be checking uh, just at a quick glance. It shouldn't take that long, right? Now, again, you shouldn't be looking anywhere but the character, especially if you're like this close, right? If you're close enough for them to hit you, you should not be looking away. There's no reason for you to look away at all, because you will get snuck by a move. See how quick that move is? That is a 13 frame startup, right? Human reaction time is around 22, 23 frames. So there is, if you're not looking at me, there's no possible way that you can avoid this move at all. That's not happening. If you're not looking, paying attention, right? But you can see a little bit of the hesitation from the startup, right? If you're watching me as the Kazuya, right? You're the Heihachi and you're watching me as the Kazuya. If you're watching me, you can see when I get just about in range to where this move is going to connect, right? So you want to make sure you get that space. And that's going to help better if you watch your opponent, okay? So tip three is practice the fundamental game mechanics right now this sounds very generic and not very clear but i'll explain so every game has a certain style right tekken itself is a 3d fighter you have games like soul cow that utilize weapons or the eight-way run system right you have smash which is a platform fighter 
which means there's a heavier emphasis on the stages, right? The stages will actually make a big difference as to how well your character can perform. In Tekken, we also have wallless stages, right? Wall and wallless stages in which when you play characters like Akuma, he becomes so much more dangerous when you are able to be carried to a wall versus in a wallless stage where there's a lot of damage he lacks because he cannot pull you to a wall and get a massive wall combo, right? So these are things you have to know, things you have to look at, things you have to study, right? Sometimes it's as simple as mastering the basic mechanics of the game that are going to help you deal with something. For example, say I'm having trouble dealing with cats. It's actually a perfect example, right? You're the Heihachi and you're having trouble dealing with cats. As a Mishima character, you should know, especially Kaz, that he is weak to a certain sidestep direction. But if you're consistently playing this game like a 2D fighter instead of a 3D fighter, this type of thing right here becomes mad dangerous, right? Dealing with these moves become mad dangerous because you don't know that you can sidestep left, sidestep, and from where Heihachi is, you can sidestep into the foreground in order to avoid these moves. But also, you have to do it in a timely manner, of course. But the point is that you can avoid some of the 50-50 nonsense that this character can enforce on you if you step properly. You have to play it like what it is, a 3D fighter, which means you have a whole third dimension to utilize, right? In sidestepping, sidewalking, and so on and so forth, combining the whole dimensions of the game in order to uh, do things properly. There's also some basic things that almost every character has, such as a down jab, right? In Tekken, we have a down jab. So you can use this to stop people from pressuring you, right? In most cases. So if they're negative and they're still trying to like trap you or something, you might be able to down jab them out of the pressure and get free. So that's another thing. Uh, some characters have what's called a magic four, right? Four being your right kick, usually. Some characters have a four on counter hit, they can get a combo if it lands. Just a simple one to show you, right? This is something generic to most characters, but these are things that you should be able to learn. In Smash, there's the parry system. Sometimes learning how to do that effectively will allow you to beat characters that are normally so much harder to deal with. Uh, we'll take and smash Zero Suit Samus, very powerful character because she's very safe on shield. But learning how to parry that character, or even characters like Inkling, characters like Mario, will allow you to get punishes off them because now they become not as safe as they were before and leaves you enough room to actually squeeze in a punish, right? It's stuff like that. Mortal Kombat, learning how to do perfect blocks, right? May help you against some certain people or certain characters. Learning how to do their version of the uh, wave dash or dash cancel uh, is, is very helpful in closing the gap. Things like that. There are things in every game that you should learn how to do that everybody can do, or at least that is known to be generic among most characters that you can learn to use, right, in order to enhance your game. But these are just basics. These are stuff, this is just basics, right? These are still basics, unique to this specific game. Like in an anime fighter, air dashing is another specific thing. Instant air dashing is a very important and very specific thing to anime fighters. Something you should always learn to use. Sometimes you are losing simply because you're not doing the basic mechanics of the game properly. So practice them. They don't take much. You just have to know that they're there. Okay? So... Moving on to tip number four is watch and analyze your replays, okay? So, especially in Tekken, we have a whole replay function that will straight up tell you the weakness of an extremely problematic move, or if it's just broken. I don't think it'll tell you if it's just broken, <laughs> but uh, it'll tell you. You gotta duck this move. You can duck this move can step this move it will tell you that type of stuff now and for other things that won't tell you that type of stuff we can link this tip back to tip one which is to act with purpose right remember i told you you have to ask those questions you do the same thing when you're watching replays 
The only difference is you're not focused on playing. So it's easier to look at your replays and ask those questions because you can pause and say, why did I get hit there? And you can rewind and come back and be like, oh, I see. I was moving too much and I wasn't watching or I was trying to do something else and I shouldn't have been trying to do that in the first place. I didn't adapt to this move. I wasn't paying attention to this move. I didn't respect this move. I didn't respect uh, plus frames of um, if I can do one of the electric, right? I didn't respect the speed. I cannot throw electric, by the way. There we go. I'm not respecting the speed. The plus frames got antsy, got launched, right? Smash, uh, Link destroyed me. Why was I losing? I kept getting hit by every single projectile. I got frustrated, just face blocked all of it. Very simple. Just ask those questions every time. Every time you land a hit, ask why you landed it. Every time you uh, got hit, ask why you got hit. If you intended to hit them, and you have to be honest with yourself, if you intended to hit them, but whiffed, ask yourself, why did they, why did you whiff? Or why did you get whiff punished, right? Why uh, did, was your spacing off? Were you not spacing at all? You have to ask these questions. These will help you analyze your replay. Just question everything, right? Question everything. Especially if it's like a friend of yours, if you're both trained together, you can ask each other's questions, right? You can be like, well, see, I was trying to hit you with this because I thought you were going to go for this. And they might tell you, well, I didn't actually know you were going to do that. I was just waiting for you to do something. As simple as that, right? Like, you'll find out that you can eliminate a lot of unnecessary stuff and save yourself some energy and mental power if you adhere to, again, linking to back to uh, tip one, which is acting with purpose and asking yourself these questions. And uh, the fourth tip, which is to analyze your replays, right? So like, even with moving in tech, if you're way back here, there's nothing Heihachi's gonna be able to threaten me with from back here. So I actually don't even need to move. There's no reason for me to move here, right? I can just stand there and watch them, right? Because there's nothing to threaten. Now, if he starts moving forward and we get to about like right here, then I need to start moving because now I can try to bait whiffs, right? Try to get some punishes going. So analyze and watch your replays, right? Again, these tip one and tip four link perfectly together. So you gotta pay attention to that type of stuff, all right? Next one. Tip five, which is to play to learn and not to win. The number one cause of people quitting fighting games and i do feel like this is the number one cause the number one cause is that people play to win and not to learn okay actually this is not even just for fighting games this could be for life right you play sports right if you like to race right they play to win not to learn Right, you should always be playing to learn and not to win. Reason being, if you play to win, that means the only thing you recognize as progress is winning. Right, and I know that sounds redundant, but that means if you don't win this match, it does not matter how well you did, it does not matter that you landed uh, that comp that super hard combo you were trying to land in training mode. Like, uh, if you were just to uh, Let's say you've been practicing causing this down forward to electric, right? And you landed it in an online setting. Like, you'll ignore and gloss over all of that and pay attention only to the fact that you lost. So, ultimately, that means everything that you did, everything that you did better, is worthless to you because you didn't get that dub. And that's the easiest way to get yourself to quit. But if you play to learn, you can see all that, right? Let's say you had a really good sequence or just a really good round where you just in your opponent's face as Kazuya and you just started just in their face. Consistent wave dashing and then you got them with a hail sweep, right? And you tricked them with a rising sun, right? Right? Got some jabs going. Like your pressure 
was good. We were able to poke with while standing uh, one out of a wave dash, right? That's stuff you should be proud of. Those little victories, that's what you want to take. Take those learnings, right? Because if you keep adding on those learnings, then wins will follow later because now you're understanding, man, I did good on that. So now what I need to work on to make it so that I can stop getting hit by this is add this into the mix, right? Or add this move, add this movement, add this technique, right? Now I can add a sidestep electric, right? Because now I know they're going to try to jab me. Well, if my execution is better, I can show you, but it's not so... Right, I might be able to do even down more two in there, right? To bait something. Right? Wave what wave a wave into electric, right? All that stuff is to be proud of. You should be proud when you've mastered something you've been practicing or that you've learned, right? Or that you finally figured out in that one game. Even though you got three would in rounds finally figured out how to deal with that super annoying move that people keep using against you because you've been doing it in training mode but you have been able to execute it right being able to execute it in a match is something to definitely to be proud of so keep that in mind play to learn it'll increase your longevity while playing a game right and that also will heavily reduce the rage factor and that i can be uh, an example that when I'm playing to learn instead of to win, my rage factor goes down significantly. <laughs> so, that's tip number five. My last and final tip is number six. Keep it simple. There are certain characters in every fighting game that can do a lot of stuff. That can do a lot of complicated stuff. Uh... For example, Kazuya's down forward to electric is uh, known to be an extremely difficult technique. Right? And I I want to try to demonstrate it, but it's not something I practice. Right? And it gets you a little bit more extra damage. But especially if like you're online or you're in a high pressure tournament situation, why would you bother going for down forward to electric? Right? And for those of you that aren't familiar with Tekken, uh, this combo normally if you just piece it together plainly, you get a combo right there. But with down forward to electric. If you land a perfect electric over this move in that crumple state, you are able to hit them with an electric fast enough that they will just get launched normally. So basically you'll get that into electric and they'll end up floating if they got hit by a regular electric like that. Which is an extremely difficult technique. I do believe it's very perfect. But even then, you see, I have a perfectly sound combo that does decent damage, pretty good damage right there. So it's not a combo I need, it's a combo I can go for that does more damage. But I don't necessarily need to go for this combo, it's not that important. Right? That's the whole idea, right? I could go for this super complicated mix, but since I'm Kazuya, all I really need to enforce is wave and wave, right? Go for a low, go for electric, go for a mid, or I can even do it like this. Right? I don't have to enforce the super difficult mixes like those unless they've shown that I need to do so. Right? It's very, just keep it simple. Oh, they're blocking a lot here. Let me throw some lows. Throw them off, right? Now they're off their guard. Right? Now they'll be ducking. If they start ducking, now I can throw some mids. Right? Let's say I've been throwing a lot of Helsing and Electrics. Now they're gonna start stepping. Right? So now what do I need to do to check that stepping? Homing move. Homing move. Right? And if I get 
a good catch. You get a combo. Oh. Uh, combo is going for Let me see if I try it one more time. I almost got it. I need to get closer. Dang it! I want to get this combo one time. Dang it! I'm gonna get it once. Oh, I'm so close! I'll do. I'm gonna try one time. Oh, I'm gonna get so frustrated. I'm gonna do this as soon as I stop the video, and I'm gonna be real bad. But the case in point is, you saw how that combo is quite a ways difficult. Again, keep it simple. I can do this. Well, right. It can be that simple, right? Or I can do something like something like that, right? So keeping it simple is going to be really good. All right. Saves you some time. Saves you a little bit of frustration in the high pressure situations. Now, if you practiced a lot and enough go for the hard stuff right but don't go for the hard stuff if you've only landed it like 40 percent of the time in training mode right if you've got it to like a 70 to 80 percent success rate go for it right if you can get it at least 80 actually 80 is worth using it in tournaments you can go for whatever you want online quite frankly unless you want to win which, like I said, play to learn, not to win. See if you can go for it. Keep trying to go for it. But ultimately, in those high pressure situations, resort to simplicity, right? The more simple you keep your game plan, the less you have to think about, right? If you're sitting here thinking about this electric, right? If you're sitting there thinking about that, that's going to obstruct your basic gameplay. You're worried about this complicated combo that you're trying to land, rather than worried about whether or not you're going to get hit by three of these. Right? Matter of fact. Well, I missed. That combo does. Doing it like that, that was about 64. Versus I could play, just keep it simple and get right here. Well hit you with a couple of those or three of those and that's that same combo if I hit you with three of those right rather than trying to risk it by repeatedly going for a launcher that they've seen me go for like the entire game so just keep it simple right if they whiff of course you want to throw out the electric right that, that you want to but otherwise keep it simple in every other game you want to go for a complicated combo right but if you're up against like saying smash you want to go for this cheesy combo but you're up against yoshi so yoshi's gonna jump out of it or nair you out of it so you want to keep it simple go for the guaranteed stuff and then back away reset to neutral right stuff like that you can do it in every single game but keep it simple especially in those high pressure situations but if you want to get the complicated stuff going you can do that go for it that's going to be it if you enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe holla at me known as hopefully i get more uh videos going this is kind of a first one to see how i do uh, but uh, hit me up, you know. All right. Peace out, notice.